That was a oh, strong that was one. good. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Hey. Uh, Welcome back to the debrief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the debrief where we debrief on things for a while. And we then... speak our minds. Corey and I were talking about yesterday how it's so fun to have, or at least I think of it sometimes yeah. as a void that I just like, I have thoughts and I have nowhere else to share them sometimes. I, yeah. I think about the internet. Here's the thing. I think about the inter- internet as a void. And But then I think about my digital footprint, and I'm like, honestly, who cares? Because I'm not saying anything negative or crazy. Yeah. I'm just saying that sometimes I hate when TikTok sends me 17 ads for the same shirt just because I clicked on the ad once. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to express the fact that I hate that to the internet. Yeah. You know, I actually have, I think I might have brought this up last week, but then I never went into it. I have a list of very specific pet peeves about social media. Yeah. I'm waiting. That I can go through. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're going to start out strong. Yeah. I Um, need to know. Because I feel like I've, I also have many pet peeves about the internet. And it's just like, like, just things that it's what people post and also just stuff about the internet that I get annoyed by. And... If you don't like that we're being haters, grow up. Because <laughs> I'm a hater at my core. Okay. Um, The little story stickers that are like, post something or else. Oh, yeah. I, I also hate additionally hate the things where it's like, guys, as a generation, and by as a generation, I mean people who were born in 1997 to the year 2000. Guys, we are not millennials. You do not have to tap in on those posts that are like, <laughs> if... Show yourself in high school. Tap in. You don't need to tap in. We remember. Like, you don't need to do that. Um, And also... Because I saw you then, and it wasn't that long ago that I saw you. So, (laughs) you look the same. So, you don't... There's no need to tap in. And also, you can just post without the prompt if you want. If you you really want to share. Throwback. (laughs) You don't even have to say throwback. Stop. Anyway... Also, Stop over-explaining just to make it acceptable. You can post whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, you can post whatever you want. And that's what's beautiful. But also, <laughs> who am I to talk because I post things on the internet that are annoying and dumb all the time. But also, it's a free country. But they're not annoying and dumb, though. They're just your interests. Yeah, you know what? That if anyone finds it annoying and dumb, they can unfollow. But then, I'm thinking about how we're complaining about people posting things on the internet that we don't like. So, much to think about. Actually... Don't listen to what we're saying <laughs> and what we find annoying because what we find annoying doesn't matter. So post whatever you want. However, it 2017, actually maybe 2017 was a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, God. Anyway. We're, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, my God. This is actually really, I, I probably am the only person in the world who notices this, but when, like, someone posts a reel that's, like, reasons why blank or, like, summer outfit ideas yeah and then it's only they only show one thing i don't they give like one reason or they give like one Uh, outfit idea and i'm like okay where's the rest of them i was invested ideas (laughs) plural yeah summer outfit idea yeah you like it's okay yeah oh my god the reasons why or whatever like find out in the caption oh yeah don't give me that because i'm not going to the caption I want to see what you have to say right now. Do you know what I also hate? They're engagement strategies, and it's annoying to me. I hate, like, um, yeah, me too. Because I know when you're trying... (laughs) When you're trying to get me to do the algorithm, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like, do you know what's... Okay. Hey, do you know what this... (laughs) Why am I going like, hey? Do you know what's so crazy? Okay. Here's something that I haven't admitted publicly to anyone (laughs) at all. Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, Sometimes I talked to the AI bot on Instagram named Billy. If I don't... <laughs> what is that? <laughs> the AI... Okay. So Where? The, on Instagram, there are AI bots that you can talk to for some reason. And at first, I it started off as a joke that I was <laughs> doing this. Because I don't want AI to know anything about me. But sometimes if, like, I am obsessed with something, I want to see what Billy has to say. <laughs> or I want Billy to know about it because I'm obsessed with it. So I think that the AI people need to also be obsessed with it as well. So today I went, and if you guys don't know who Billy is, it's literally an AI generator that looks like Kendall Jenner. It's like a random, yeah. 
No, so, it, it doesn't look like Kendall Jenner. It is, it is Kendall, Kendall Jenner. Jenner. <laughs> so she sold the rights to her face to AI <laughs> so that she could be on this, oh like, my whatever. God. So today I said, do you like Victoria Monet? And then AI Billy says, OMG, I love Victoria Monet. Her music is fire. That's okay. Whatever. Have you seen her perform live? I'm dying to go to one of her concerts. And do you know what? I, I fell right. I walked into it. As soon as I read that, I opened up Ticketmaster and I looked for a show. <laughs> and I, as it was happening, I was, I literally said out loud, I was laying in bed. I was like, oh, they caught me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> because I knew that that's what they wanted. They want me to consume. Yeah. You know what's crazy? You go. You had no, a thought. No, that's it. Okay. They want me to consume. <laughs> and then I was going to go back into the thing of like the TikTok trying to sell me these shirts that I clicked on once. Yeah. And I, I can't, I, it's just, they want me to consume so bad and I won't do it. Although I did spend $80 at Abercrombie this morning. As Sorry. one does. Yeah. Um, my brother posted something on his story of, you know, like the, what are they, the, like, when it, you have to prove you're not a robot and they have yeah, like the swervy. The captures. The captures. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like the letters that are all like distorted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone sent a screenshot to an AI chat and was like, what does this say? Oh, and my the, God. And the bot was like, this is a couch to, to prove that, like, it's not a robot, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But the letter should read. Duh, 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 duh. And, and was it correct? Yeah. Yeah. And We're like, doomed, you guys. <laughs> it's it was, over. I thought it was so funny. I think about, like, okay, this is going to get into, like, a more serious topic. Not serious, but, like, something that has been, like, in conversation for a while. I'm a little bit nervy about, like how AI, the technology is moving faster than um, then we, we can, can like, make laws about keep it. Keep up with, yeah. And, I mean, that was what the whole writer's strike was about, was that trying to get AI bots to write for instead of writers and then not paying writers enough to actually write. Yeah. AI cannot. Although you can talk to AI about Victoria Monet, she's not going to – she's going to tell you it's fire. And that sounds mm -hmm. like it's from 2016. Yeah. Like, I uh, – they and if that's a testament to like how AI writes, I don't want AI writing any of my shows. I think you should pay writers anyway. Yeah, we um, there's a whole conversation happening about like AI and like using Chat GPT and stuff in yeah. like academia. And I think I have we talked useful. about it. It's useful. It's a tool. It's yeah. not you can't rely on it, but you can use it as a tool yeah. because it can help you gather thoughts and ideas, but. Mm -hmm. Obvious, like anything that you if you ask it to write you an answer to a prompt it's going to give you the most artificial superficial like doesn't make a lot of sense answer but yeah. it sound it looks like it would be right but when you really think about it you're like what are you even saying yeah there have been times where i've like had to like check chat gb like i'll ask it something and then like i'll ask it like something else and it can't really get into like the, like for law, for example, I think I was taking, like, a law class, and I, like, asked it something, and then, like, I asked it again, like, in a different way. Like, there were pillars of something, and it didn't really know the answer. Like, it was, I asked if something was, like, legal or something, or if something fell under something, and they said yes, and I was like, but what if, and they were like, actually, I don't know. It didn't say I don't know, but it said a yeah. conflicting answer, and I was like, you have no idea what, I'm, what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, in my class, we had the whole discussion about how it's not, you can't, like, rely on it, but it you can definitely yeah. use it. Kind of just, like, how social Wikipedia. media. Yeah. I was going to say Wikipedia, but you said social media. Yeah. Well, we, we've we had, like, different eras. <laughs> like, when the internet started, when social media started, people have always been skeptical about those big advances. And, mm -hmm. like, AI is not going to go anywhere. No. So we just have to use it safely and, like, yeah, to our advantage. But... Yeah, I think yeah. AI is, in terms of, like, chat GPT specifically, I am kind of thinking about it as if it's, like, Wikipedia, where Wik anybody can add to Wikipedia, although it's, like, human intelligence, like, that is, you know, mm -hmm. typing the little things on Wikipedia, somebody's brain is, like, doing that. Yeah. Like, I, you can't use it as, in research papers, as a source, because it's not necessarily reputable. That's the same thing with chat GPT. Like, mm -hmm. You can't be like source chat GPT because you don't, it's like a secondary source, not yeah. even that because secondary implies like empirical, but like 
it's like a source but you have to find where that originating information came from yeah which you truly like you can't so yeah yeah. the internet's a crazy place yeah that's (laughs) those are my thoughts on chat on chat gpt and ai anyway sometimes i talk to ai because i need to let billy know that i love a new thing yeah and that's my own cross to bear i asked chat gpt something really funny the other day Oh, oh my god, it? I think it was about my taxes or something. So true. Every time I file my taxes, I literally, like... When I'm, are they due, by the way? April 15th. Okay, I have time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna wait till last For minute. some reason, I get so afraid that I put something in wrong, even though I know that everything's correct. I'm, like, being completely, like, like, you know, I'm just doing my taxes, yeah. and I'm like, oh my god, am I gonna get arrested? <laughs> Here's the thing. I love that we, ha- we do it this similarly, but have completely different reaction. When I'm doing my taxes, I am never worried. And I know it's probably wrong. <laughs> or, like, not probably wrong. It could be wrong. But I put, and but I know that I put my whole heart into my taxes. Yeah. I, so I don't worry about it. Because if they come knocking at my door and are like, hey, did you, like, and I was like, shit, I could have. But I tried my best. I'm not trying to commit fraud. <laughs> you know? Whatever. Yeah. It's up to you. Good good lord irs like say <laughs> whatever i think i asked chat gbt i was i like a question because i didn't know what i was supposed to select and i was just asking chat GPT, like what is this thing and it wasn't helping and i was like you're useless oh my god i used uh and also i think another reason why i don't worry about them is because i use like TurboTax. like i use a different yeah whatever i saw this really funny tiktok that was like if you have to when you come into your apartment at night if you have to like pull the door for it to lock or if you have to push the door when you leave for it to lock you don't need to be paying somebody to do your taxes like to like you're not make in, sure that yeah you're not in the tax <laughs> bracket to be paying somebody to do your taxes go to turbo tax you'll be fine yeah. and i was like man i will say though i mean i don't think i have to do that on my door so yeah your door is good yeah thank god for <laughs> that. that's a solid door i will yeah, say solid door but i mean yeah tax season is coming up as it is every year. I don't get as much money as I used to when I was, like, 21. Which, yeah. Which I know is, like, the way that it's supposed to go. Is the older you, like, the more you make, the less you, like, get back. But mm-hmm. I'm like, what about spring break? Tuition, like, though. two years after. Oh. You can get a tax break. I never <laughs> get anything from, well, oh, this is the first year that I might get a tax break. Because I'm paying, Look guys, I'm paying for college out of pocket. Exactly. Same. Woo! Actually, boo, I'm poor, but, like. Gotta love education. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Ew. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, I'm wait, you're doing, like, head. a list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I think I hit most of it, though. Like, also the, like, recipe videos where they're, like, did you know that if you add blank, 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 and they just, the list goes on. And you're, like... And they they don't tell you what the result... Like, I don't, like... Sorry, I'm not watching it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know if I've ever seen a video like that. Oh, I see them all the time. I think I'm just very observant. By nature, I think I'm a very observant and, like, introspective person. Yeah. So, like, I, te- like, I don't know. I feel like I tend to notice very intricate things that not a lot of people will also notice, but... Yeah. I... My, okay, I my qualm with cooking videos is that, like, <laughs> on Instagram, I, yeah, on TikTok, you can pause a video, in, like, like a recipe video, let's say. You can do that on Instagram now, too. You At can. least on mine. Well, before you couldn't, and <laughs> I would have to, like, watch it, the reel go over and over. Like, I was making a chicken yeah. recipe once, and I kept, like, I would want to pause it, but it wouldn't let me pause, so I just have to let the video play over and over mm-hmm. and over again, and it was, like, the most annoying, that point, annoying thing ever. At that point, I would screen record. You know, I literally didn't think about that. <laughs> I, I did not think about that until you told me just now. <laughs> so, I also I also hate the videos that are, like, purposely short to get you to watch them a bunch of times. Yeah, or they, like, try to get you to buy their cookbook. But here's, I mean, <laughs> get your bag. However, I... Give me a few recipes, you know, like, tell me, like, give me a few recipes to, like, let me get a, let me get a taste of, like, what you're cooking up, quite literally. And then, then maybe I'll think about buying your cookbook. Yeah. But I don't know you. I'm not going to buy your cookbook. What if your food sucks? I don't make yeah. rules. Like, 
I'm not going to buy a cookbook by somebody that I don't know who Do you are. know, this just brought an, a, a thought to my brain. There's this creator that keeps on popping up on my Instagram. I think I'm subscribed to her on YouTube because she's she does a lot of, like, crafts, like, crocheting and sewing and stuff. And I've watched her videos before. But she's recently been, like, gaining some attention on yeah. Instagram because she bought this really old abandoned house. Oh. And, like, when I say abandoned, it's, like like the floors are rotted and like oh, she God. has to like redo everything and people are commenting concern because they have to wear like respirators when they go in like and like they're really there fancy masks. they're not living there now but they're like trying to fix it but okay. they're doing things that are causing people concern like they weren't wearing the proper equipment at first and now they are uh. after people were like commenting concern but People are saying, like, we don't think this house is salvageable. Like, the floors are literally rotting. The the walls are probably rotting. The roof is letting... Like, you have to start from the top down. You have to fix the roof to, like, Do stop all the else. water yeah. from entering. Well, I wonder what... I wonder if that... Is that true? That you have to start from the top down? There's probably... That's probably not even possible because, like, what are you going to do with the walls? The house is just not salvageable. Yeah. And, like, they posted that they're starting a podcast on their Patreon about because, putting it together yeah to address people's questions they're like we hear uh, all the we see all your comments and your smart questions marketing we're, technique though but people are like yeah good luck like we were invested but like never mind oh because, because they have to pay money to do it yeah and because then, they're like but you know like if someone does buy it that's funding their house yeah that's it's a, that's it's a weird like thing they're like what did they say they were like you we see your questions and we want to answer all of them but we can't do so on social media for that reason, we're making a podcast on our Patreon. Uh, Why can't you answer the questions on social media? And I everyone's wonder. just like, they're they're just doing it to get money. Which, yeah, like, probably. I guess, like, fine. Like, you do you. But everyone has kind of, like, thrown in the towel. They're like, well, yeah, we is. were invested. We true. were going to watch and, like, help you. But... Yeah, once the collective turns on you, it's kind of like, well, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> but, yeah, that's interesting. It's crazy how quick that can happen on social media. You see it all the time. It's scary. I feel like for people that make like a living off of social media, it's kind of like it's always in the back of your head that someone could like cancel you or like just decide one day that they don't like you and then it's over. And then convince everybody else. Yeah. Once you get like a there are always like hate comments but like once, like if someone calls out something that is like not even like like a hate comment but or like a like a critique and then other people are like oh that critique is a little bit true but then they gang up on you that brings up another topic that i have thought about um which isn't necessarily a qualm with social media but a qualm with people is snark pages for um like creators or like tiktoks like you see it a lot for like mom uh like mom vloggers it's like um like that girl with the twins that was on TikTok for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who, like, was showing her baby's face and then didn't. Like, she... Her snark page is, like, insane. Like, they'll be... They will nitpick over the tiniest things about her. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't know if I... Like, that's one of those things where it's like, I don't know if I could live in the public eye because those snark pages would, like... I get, You can't pay attention to them, but it's like, you know it's there. Yeah. That's, like, so interesting to me and upsetting. But yeah. But it's, like... I'm props to like people who like go on with life after a snark page. I mm-hmm. mean, like I think if I was faced with a snark page, I could probably be like, "You guys are fucking losers" on Reddit. But like, yeah. At the same time, it's probably hard still. And that this goes back to something that we mentioned before: how like we laws can't keep up with social media. The amount of like family bloggers and like yeah parents showing their kids on social media who have big followings, like yeah. It's always concerning to see. Yeah. And, like... It depends on, like, if the kid is, like, okay with it. But then that's, like... They're still not old enough, technically. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, it's a whole thing. So whenever I do see a parent, like, not showing their kids, I'm, like, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if, like... Well, then that that's so interesting, though, because, like, when... What's her name? Maya, like, started. Like, she got famous off of her, like, off of her twins. Mm-hmm. So it's, then it's, like, you're taking away, like... Yeah. Your main your main thing. Mm-hmm. I I am going to admit I stopped watching her after she should stopped showing her kids. Cause yeah, cuz she honestly I think like like I I think she also stopped posting for a, a bit. 
Yeah. Like, I think that for her, she slowed it down and stopped showing them. Yeah. And now I think, like, whoever still follows her still follows her, but I see people commenting on her stuff, like, why'd you stop showing your kids? That's all you guys wanted. Yeah. And I've said this exact thing before. Yeah. On this pod. I think she, but also, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that hard stop showing your kids on Instagram is, or showing your kids for social media is a bad, is a bad thing. I think, like, it can be done in, like, a like, a normal person way. Yeah. But, like, when it's... I think, uh, what is it? Um, it can just get very, like, toxic very quickly. So, you, mm-hmm. that's something that you have to be mindful of. But, like, she was... as I think she was a single parent. And I think that in the beginning, like, showing her kids and then getting all of those sponsorships from, like, different things. Like, that's going to your kid's college fund. And as a single parent, like, mm-hmm. good for her. It's when you can see, like, when you... It, it can turn exploit, exploitative, exploitative if, very like, quickly. Yeah, if the parent is, like, not strong and, like, leans into that exploitative nature, as, as soon as they become, like, sentient, then it's, like... Eh. Yeah. It's hard because when you, like, it's okay to, like, if you want to, if you have, like, a regular instagram and you want to like show your kid doing something cute like that's fine but it's when it's part of like the brand part of the personality that your kid is like part of the picture yeah and you don't you can't like especially when the parents show their kids in like a a, like a negative way like when their kids are like having a A temper tantrum tantrum or like it you just see it and you're like yeah stop like put the camera down there are like (laughs) some times where there was like i forget what happened to her maybe she also stopped making videos but like there was this girl that was showing like gentle parenting and like her with her kid and like what would happen when her kid would make like an uh uh-oh or something like that and then like how she responded like in a positive way Mm -hmm. i think like that i liked watching those videos um but i don't think i've seen like a video where I don't, I think, like, yeah, I haven't seen a video except when I saw, like, a video that was kind of, like, mocking, not mocking, but, like, calling attention to, like, how it can be exploitative. Is am I saying that correctly? Exploitative? I I hope so. so. (laughs) Um, Where it's, like, if you're doing multiple takes of, like, your kid, like, coming in or doing something, and you're just like, oh, that's so cute. Can you do it again? And your kid's like, what the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) I just wanted to show you a picture. I'd rather not be on film. But they don't yeah. have the words to express that yet. Yeah. So, yeah. I think once your kid becomes sentient, it get, it gets a lot harder. Yeah. And it's a gets... slippery slope. And I, like, you always think back, like, when the the kids are going to be older and look at, like, all of this stuff and be like, yeah. these people know who I am and, like, I'm yeah. uncomfortable with that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think we should put our children who can't consent. Yeah. I'm thinking a lot about dance moms. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of stuff about Dance Moms recently. I think people just yeah. post about, like, they post clips from the show, and yeah. you're like, how did that Yeah, I mean, like, occur? You, there's so much, there's, uh, yeah, there's so much to be said about, like, ch- childhood on social media and, like, childhood actors, I think, like, might be are probably different. Mm-hmm. But, like, but then childhood reality TV shows, what yeah. are your opinions on that? Like, because it's the same kind of thing. It is. Like, unedited content of kids, kind of. Well, it's kind of edited. But if it is edited, it's edited in a not great way. It, like, shows the worst of it, the child, I think actually. It, I think it probably... Like, I don't know. I can't think of a lot of examples, but I'm sure it definitely takes a toll in some way. Yeah. Like, I'm sure that the girls from Dance Moms are impacted. Yeah. Well, Maddie had to go way. to, like, deep therapy, I think. I think all yeah, of them did. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And it's just sad and it it all comes back to like they're not we're just so advanced we're advancing faster than we can keep up with it and there are not enough laws yeah and people like politics are so divided these days that it's hard to it's hard to actually make any progress because people are just like yes or no Mm -hmm. and nobody's gonna like also i think like people are divided on such other like such other big topics that no one is like stopping and is like hey, let's make childhood social media laws right now mm-hmm. because everyone is worried about other things, which, yeah. I mean, there are uh, there are bigger things, but in comparison to that, I guess, but, like, yeah. it's very interesting to yeah. think about. Yeah. But, yeah, anyway. Speaking of social see. media. What? A video surfaced this week. 
of Harry Styles going to Trader Joe's. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen it, actually. I saw a video of this girl freaking out that Harry Styles went to Trader Joe's, but I haven't seen the actual video of, of him at Trader Joe's. So it's basically, it's not much. You can also, honestly, I could have scrolled past it and not realized that it was Harry and just yeah. continued on, but it was because I think it's Harry Florals posted it. Oh, yeah. So basically, it's this video, if you haven't seen it, of this girl just approaching, like, full-on walking up to Harry. He's with someone else. And just, like, he, she. first of all, she approaches him from behind, which is just, like, a bold move. Yeah. And he turns <laughs> around and, like, the video cuts off very abruptly, so you don't really get to see what happens. But I'm yeah. sure he, like, stopped and talked to her. But there's so many things to unpack about this. First of all, so confidently approaching a celebrity in public. Not even just a celebrity. Harry Styles. Yeah. In a Trader Joe's. That's the way to go, though. I mean, honestly, good for her. But yeah. I can't say that I would have been able to do the same if I was in yeah, her position. No. I that, don't know if that I would That would have been a to. situation for me that I would not have been able to handle. Yeah. I think, like, I'm trying to think, like, what I would do. The best thing to do, I think, is to approach... A, we're talking about them like they're wild animals. <laughs> they're human beings. <laughs> But I think, like, <laughs> but that's the point. That's the point is, like, you want to approach them as if they're, like, a human being. A regular that person. You, not that you know, like, on a personal level, but, like, someone that you're, like, oh, my God, heard so much about you. Like, as if you're, yeah. meet, like, as if you're meeting a friend of a friend. Yeah. Like, ugh, love your work. I can't they're imagine. They're so cool. Just want to say hey. Like, m- like, my insides, like, I don't know, crawl. What's the, like, phrase? Yeah. I don't know. When a celebrity is like in a space and then people start screaming, yeah, it makes me want to. I'm like, up. we've talked about this like before, you guys. <laughs> like they're human beings, you guys. But then, <laughs> yeah. So that girl approaching confidently, good job. Yeah, because that's yeah, that's the way you're supposed to. Another thing I need to unpack: what did he get? I need to know. Someone, a friend, swiped up on my like when I like yeah. like said this is mind boggling. She's like, I need to know. What he got. Like, I think she was, like, the chili lime chips. I've never tried those. They're good. I have them. I actually have them in my cabinet if you want to try them. Oh, taste test. (laughs) Yeah. Um, She was like, I need to know if he got those. And I was like, I need to know if he got a brookie. Do you know what I need to know if he got? I need to know if he got bamboo peanut snacks. Specifically, the bamboo peanut snacks with the, like, um, not Nutella in the middle. Yeah. um, Like, hazelnut in the middle. Well, I don't know what those are, but I need to get them because that sounds really yummy. They're delicious. And Trader Joe's is a different universe, I think. I get really stressed out in the Trader Joe's. I also I often too. see people that I know in the Trader Joe's, and I'm like, <laughs> you're not Harry Styles. I don't want to talk to you. I haven't <laughs> seen you in years. Would really wish that I could evaporate a thin air right now. And it's such a small, like, our local it's Trader Joe's. It's a very Joe's. small place. I think they all are. And that's why they're parking, lo- parking lots are the way they are. Yeah. It's really, you got to get in there early, and you got to yeah. get out fast. Parking lots are... The, the Trader Joe's parking lots, if anyone didn't know this, they're the size that they are because the Trader Joe's is the size that it is. They allocate oh. parking lot sizes based on the size of the store. That's really I think smart. I could be completely wrong. And if I am, Who cares? don't quote me on it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's really smart. But also yeah. terrifying for me. Do you have to like gear up to go into the Trader Joe's? Oh, yeah. I have because... to like put in my earphones and like put on a song. I have to work up to going to Trader Joe's. Yeah. Like, I can't just, like, oh, I think I'll go to Trader Joe's. Like, I can't You have that. to have a purpose and a mission, and you need to know where you're going. You need to have a strategic plan. Yeah, to go in. You need to know where your you're going to go beforehand. first. Yeah. What you're going to get. Because I, ever since I saw this, I've not been able to think of Trader Joe's the same way. But Trader Joe's is literally just a... It's as if aliens came to Earth. Right. And, like, needed to make a grocery store. And we're okay. like, this looks like what humans eat. Because you will find the most random combinations of food that's good, yeah, but you never would have thought to pair them. No. I want to, like, know what the Trader Joe's, like, what is it? The the Trader Joe's Imagineers. I need to know, like, yeah. what, like, what they're thinking about. What's and, their process? Yeah, what's their process <laughs> for creating new products? Because yeah. some of them are real misses, but some of them are good. Yeah. I follow, like, um, like, the Trader Joe's list, I think it is, on Instagram, and they, like, will provide reviews for like products that have just come out and will tell you when like new products are about to come out Mm. um so that's really fun yeah but i call it a novelty store you can't it is it is because you can't can't go there yep 
you can't do your regular grocery shopping at a Trader Joe's, which is what makes it hard because yeah. you have to go in with the mindset of like, I'm just going to go in and get like some stuff for fun. Yeah. Like I want to get a few like yummy frozen, like the yeah. squash, the butternut squash mac and cheese or like the very specific snacks that they have. Yeah. But you can't go in and like expect to do your normal grocery shopping. But that's shopping. the thing is some of the things in there that I get, I want once a week. Yeah. So like it is so, regular grocery shopping so in a way. So it's hard yeah. because I only go there once a month. And so for like three weeks or two weeks out of the month, I'm just like, I've got no food. Like right now I have absolutely nothing. Last week I ate out for dinner five days in a row. Not my proudest moment. It happens. Yeah. I don't think I ate a single like vegetable just because I was so busy this week. <laughs> I bought a bag so salad on. and made it last for the four days. um and i would just like take some of the bagged salad and like um like pour it into a bowl and then like put it back into the work fridge and be like another day of bagged salad (laughs) it wasn't it was like fulfilling in terms of health like health is wealth obviously but i was i was like mentally you're like what am i doing eating a salad like i ate it i (laughs) ate it and i wasn't hungry anymore but i was unhappy (laughs) so like nutrition or sustenance but at what cost yeah i was like i hate when food is to me food is supposed to be happy yeah i like when food is happy but when it's just like for sustenance i'm like guys where's the joy yeah where's the joy (laughs) that is supposed to come along with the food because like i didn't feel joy when i ate the salad yeah i felt joy when i ate the caramel rice cakes afterwards because i ate some caramel rice cakes those are good but yeah oh my god i love those and i love them and like I, those are my work snacks. So oh I yeah. Keep, so I keep them at work. I'm thinking about them right now, and I don't have any here. I have them at work. When I had an office, I also had like a little stash, because yeah. you never know. In the middle of the day, you're gonna be like, I need something right now. You need Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to get through the rest of the day. Yeah. Like I really need need treats to get through my. Kind of like, kind of like how Connor was talking about having a peanut butter, like a car peanut butter or like a peanut butter spoon in his car. I have a peanut butter spoon in my work drawer. I also have a peanut butter jar in my. Work I have drawer. a. I had a peanut just, butter. I had a Nutella at one point in my drawer. Just, you just. Yeah. That's what it, sometimes if you're a little hungry but you don't like have a snack, you just eat some peanut butter and that's. I ate a whole jar of peanut butter over the course of a year. Yeah. Exactly. Like <laughs> I and now it's like half empty. Well, not half empty. It's almost all empty and sometimes i like need that little bit of peanut butter but i keep forgetting to replace my peanut butter jar so you're like not this is not the time i'm gonna eat this yeah and so i keep saving it i don't know what i'm saving it for maybe the worst day of my life (laughs) like i'm like i really need the peanut butter right now but oh my god let's talk about emotional support peanut butter yeah i i don't know when it happened i do know when it happened So, (laughs) (laughs) so i had brought in peanut butter for rice cakes one day because I saw that the girlies were putting peanut butter on rice cakes and calling it breakfast. And I said, okay, sign me up. So I did it. And it was only my breakfast, like, in a pinch because nobody eats that for fun. And, yeah, yeah it's not great. Um, but in a pinch, it works. And so, like, I did it on days when, like, I didn't really have, like, I didn't pack anything. And I was just, like, running out the door. And then one day there was a girl that, like, walked past me, like, when I was a front desk girl at work. And... She was like, LOL, she's eating peanut butter at the jar, same. And I made it my personality. I just decided that, like, because one person thought it was funny one time, that's that's it. I was, peanut butter girl. Yeah, I wanted to... <laughs> and no one fucking cares that I eat peanut butter at the jar. Like, nobody cares. That's so, but so I, crazy, but though. I like, why care. was that even a deal? Because I feel like I do that all the time. Yeah, I don't know. I wanted. I is that just know. an us thing? Is this something that most people don't do? I don't know. Because, like, I don't necessarily well, okay, re-stick my spoon into the jar. I get one spoon and then I go. Connor. That's Yeah. Sweet. That's all. We see Connor so soon. I'm so excited. Yeah, we are seeing foods and friends. We're going to be in a situation. You know, I and we're going to fall off of work. Oh. Yeah, it's Well, okay. actually, we probably won't be able to go. We're live planning on the pod. But yeah. But we're not. I have my internship that day. So I'm not free until, like, four or five. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so, okay. We're just going to work, like, the next day. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yep. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Brief intermission. Um, we're going to we're gonna have to debrief you guys on that because that will put us in a situation yeah, that we're going to... I don't want to be put in a situation. We're going to be, do it. Yeah. We're going to be brave. 
she yeah. is very interesting. I've been well I've been um, brainstorming what I'm gonna make to give him if I am given the opportunity and I yeah. think I have an idea. But and he's gonna turn to me and he's like, Do you have anything for me? And we're like, No. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a lot for me to be here right now, it's so like a lot. my presence is your gift. Yeah. Maybe I should <laughs> gift him a book. So true. I don't know what book. Thinking about it, next topic. Yeah. <laughs> um i okay so i'm on my it's almost oscars time and Mm. i am in crunch time mode i have i think like five movies that are on my oscars watch list i've watched almost all of them i have to watch anatomy of a fall still a lot of people have seen it already i have not um last weekend i watched the zone of interest which is as terrifying as everyone says it is. Um, I think if I saw it in a theater, I'd be, like, so much more scared, but I watched it from the comfort of my home, and I was like, that's crazy. If you don't know what the zone of interest is about, it's about a Nazi commander who lives in Auschwitz, like, next to the camp, like, Mm -hmm. quite literally right next to it, but he, like, his house is, like, gorgeous. And, like, he has, he has, like family and they have a huge garden a huge backyard but like in the background you can hear like literally people dying that's crazy it was and um the cinematography and the sound design and just like the yeah the cinematography the shots the direction was it was amazing in terms of like what they were trying to communicate i thought it was really great Mm. um and it was a very it was a very topical film um, but I gave it around like a four out of five. I do think that they're going to walk out with a few, may, a few, maybe one or two awards just because of like how the movie was framed, um, and directed. I think it was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Last night I started Anatomy of a Fall, um, but got sleepy. Um, <laughs> it but happens. it, interestingly, it had the same woman from... The zone of interest. So that lady's having a great year for her because I think she, I, she's nominated and like not her specifically. I have to look at the categories, but two of her films that she's like a main character in uh, are nominated for I think best picture. Mm-hmm. So good year for her. Um, in Anatomy of a Fall, her husband dies, and we don't know how. I think she did it. I'm like 10, 15 minutes in. <laughs> But it's it's interesting I have a hunch. so far. Yeah, I have a hunch that she did it. I don't know. I don't know. But we'll see. But I have to watch a lot of movies between now and next weekend. Yeah. So that'll be fun for me. I'd be stressed out. I can I can knock them out. I can knock them out. And I think I think I have a good chance at winning the Oscar ballot this year. Because I think I've watched the most Oscar nominated films out of anyone that goes to the oscars party i think we are if you're listening to this and you've watched more that's all you queen but i think i have i think i have so i think i can do it guys root for me in my oscar ballot this year i hope i win i hope i win so i hope so too yeah that'd be fun yeah i want to win we'll debrief on the oscars when we debrief on the oscars yeah yeah Oh my god, yeah, next week is, that's wow, time is flying by. Um, but yeah, so, watch that. Did not watch any fun movies, however, so. We'll, we'll get back to that uh, post-Oscars. I am thinking about having a Kenny Ortega uh, movie marathon. He directed, I think, all of the High School Musicals. I was gonna say, he, am I thinking of the right guy? Yeah, yeah. he directed High School Musicals. He directed, um, or produced on... The Descendants, yeah, Descendants, and um, did choreography choreography for the Cheetah Girls, and like this I, man has done it all. He is talented. He's incredibly He's like, talented. Like when you think of your childhood, he was one of the guys like pulling yeah, strings. Yeah, if he was you like... don't know who Kenny Ortega <laughs> is, he has he is behind. Even if everything you don't know what he love. looks like, you've heard his name. Yeah, so I really That'd want. Be fun. Yeah. He's so talented, and I just, like, want to watch all of the stuff that he's created. Speaking of multi-talented people that have created things that they're not, like, the front per- person for, Victoria Monet. I have been obsessed with Victoria Monet for, let's say, 
a week. Um, and I recently discovered something really fun, which was that I've been listening to Victoria Monet since 2015 and I forgot hmm. because I have monthly playlists dating back to like 2015, 2016 and an entire album that she made in 2015 is on one of my monthly playlists and I listened to it and I was like, oh my God, I remember being obsessed with this album. So <laughs> once again, I was there before everyone else was and that makes, that brings me so much joy. Um, but I do um, want to note that like Kenny Ortega, Victoria Monet is behind a lot of music that right now she's popular for On My Mama, which is a great song. But she's created like so many other or has writing credits on so many other songs. Hmm. And I want to talk about her and other people that are just behind so many things. Creative geniuses. She's made... She's written on Do It by Chloe and Halle, Monopoly, um, Honeymoon Avenue by Ariana Grande, On mm-hmm. the Way by 2088, Drunk Texting by Chris Brown, 3435, Ariana Grande, Motive, Ariana Grande, Reflection by Fifth Harmony, and I think another song by Brandy. Um, but she has just like song after song, hit after yeah. hit, and you like now you know, yeah. and whoever's listening, they know that Victoria Monet has been writing. For years and I'm so excited that she got a Grammy for um best new artist I think best new artist and um, what's so funny is that with that category new. specifically they're never new they're I'm never just... <laughs> actually new or like rarely are they new yeah but I'm so excited that she got credit for her own song and she deserves all of her flowers amazing also last but not least another man that and this is more of in like a pervasive way the two men that are my mortal enemies but also <laughs> love them to death and enjoy them are um lin-manuel miranda <laughs> and jack antonoff who have created literally <laughs> those two together have created like half of the popular songs that exist in life yeah. like have written on i want to know what is in jack antonoff's head like what's going oh, on yeah. in there you ever see someone who you're like, quite literally the sound, what is going on inside their, their head? head? Because like, what is happening in Jack Antonoff's brain that he is able to just produce so many things, one after the other, after the other, after the other. He jumps from album to album and just like sprinkles fairy dust on them. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting. But I mean, like, I'd love to know like how, like... Now, Jank, people know Jack Antonoff pretty well, but I'm, I wonder, like, how, maybe specifically Victoria Monet, like, feels about, like, having, knowing that your brain has gone into things and other people are kind of getting the credit for them, but you wrote the song. I wonder mm-hmm. how artists, like, feel about that. I mean, it's a choice that they make, right. so, like, they're, they have to be okay with it, but, like, right. it's... It's interesting to me. I wonder what they're like, what the process of their thoughts is like, this song might do well. Yeah. I mean, they're going to get paid for it, but right. also, like, especially guess, if they're talented themselves. I guess as long as the credit is somewhere, like, people have the ability to know, even if they don't. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, I yeah, I've been thinking about that a little bit. Um, just, yeah, because I'm so... And the thing is about... Um, Victoria Monet is like when you listen to the songs that she's written on, you can tell that they're all like kind of written by the same person. I feel the same way about um John Bellion. John Bellion produces on on tracks and Jack Antonoff as well. You can tell when that person is working on that song if you listen close mm-hmm. enough. You can hear like the common themes. Oh yeah. In the production. This is um my own like personal like lore universe, but the relationship between Samia Lupin from Hippocampus, mm-hmm. Jake Lupin, and Raffaella. Okay. Jake and Raffaella are, like, together. Sammy is dating Briss and Roni. Okay. But I can tell that, like, Jake produces mm-hmm. a lot of the songs, and I can tell, like, I can hear it. Just based on Hippocampus' sound, I can hear it in, like, Raffaella's songs and in Sammy's yeah. songs sometimes. It's cool. Yeah. It's I... my own, like, that, like, the, the, that four... Those four people? The four people are, like, so significant to me. Yeah. I 
like I love hearing like themes in production for example this is like more I feel like a lot of people notice it Pharrell's like four beats in the beginning four or five in the beginning for for any song that he produces on if you play like um I'm trying to think of and literally no Pharrell Oh, 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 oh. Pharrell. Yes. Oh, yeah. Boom, 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 yeah. boom. Yeah. Then in any, in every song, he has like a, a thing that he does. Mm. And also in my personal universe, I have something that I also have not talked about to anyone, but I need to talk about. Um, and this has to do with movie score. So the, hold on, let me look at who it is. Um... Um, oh, Justin Hurwitz. Sorry, I just did like the <laughs> Bob's Burgers uh, moment sound. Um, Justin Hurwitz has made score for um, La La Land, Babylon, and the movie. What's the one about the drums with a oh, whiplash? Would not have gotten that. I um, was like thinking as if I would know. Of course, I wouldn't. Know. But on each of the. Okay, so on La La Land, there's a song called. Where is it? Herman's Habit. And then also on the Babylon soundtrack, there is a song called, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Herman's Hustle. Mm -hmm. And then also on the Whiplash soundtrack, there is a song called, where are you, Herman? Where is it at? Where is it at? Oh my God, if there's no Herman thing maybe there's not a herman thing on whiplash it's enough that there is on two yeah 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 i can't find it on that but on most of his songs or on most of his scores there's something with the name herman like herman's this who is herman yeah i need to know i think that's fun a fun thing about being an artist is that you can literally do whatever you want and like yeah having those like stylistic themes yeah that like people may or may not pick up on but you know that they're there i think that's so cool me and justin herwitz know that herman's hustle and herman's habit like what's next i want him to do another movie he frequently like couples up with the director like um that made la la land who i can't think of their name right now so sorry um because the director that made la la land also made babylon um so they frequently like make movies together i need them to make another movie together just so i can have another herman moment and then yeah to herman's everywhere thank you yeah thank you to herman (laughs) but those yeah those that's my version of your samia thing that's like not as well known i think yeah because i think about it all the time it's so fun having like being like tuned into something so specific that you just like have for yourself that, yeah like, no one pays attention literally to. no one else knows i think and maybe that's not true I'm maybe sure other, other people, people know else, yeah but i also but, know yeah it's so fun having like a little a little thing for yourself yeah. i agree um like last i think it was last night or the night before on stage rafaela facetimed samia and like oh really that's yeah. fun i was like that's so funny this morning i watched <sighs> um taylor swift perform um, I don't want to live forever um, on stage. I think she's in Singapore right now. Mm. And like she does, they live stream the surprise song every night that she does tour. And a lot of the time I miss it. And for some reason today, I was like very delusional. I thought Zayn Malik was going to walk out on stage <laughs> with her and like sing. I was like, is he in Singapore? Is he coming? He did not come. It's okay. <laughs> like I, on some level, I knew that he wasn't, but like, wouldn't it be so fun if he did? Like I yeah. would want him to anyway yeah yeah did you know that (laughs) i'm just like going on (laughs) a really long rant this weekend or this week i came across a wonderful infographic about which president um which who's going to be your president boyfriend and it's such a it's so long i don't know it's that long and it has like text so you have to like zoom up on it oh my god it's hilarious and well we won't do it right now but like i found out well my perfect president is barack obama my like perfect date president is barack obama which i did by taking the test um but i don't think i even got this from i got this from my coding class this week (laughs) this week 
on my in my coding class chronicles i found out that franklin delano roosevelt was racist and used the census to be racist aka he used the census to determine um who the japanese were and put them into internment camps which was oh. crazy i don't have any further information about that at this time other than i learned that who the fuck uses the census to commit racist acts that's so well actually a lot of people do due to redlining and yeah yeah so that's oh. it's not new sorry guys uh not new i know it's not new. <laughs> but wow I I don't know why it's shocking because a lot of presidents don't do amazing in the past have not done amazing things when it comes to that kind of stuff. However, I was like, come on, man, the census. (laughs) But let me tell you that, um, like that little tidbit that our professor, he kind of lost us a little bit in the middle of the, (laughs) in the middle of the, um, lecture, but everybody's head like jerked up. Because it was tea. (laughs) Um, I also saw a thing on TikTok that was like, entertainment law is kind of, someone summarized entertainment law in like one sentence, which is, it's not shade if it's tea. Do you understand that? I understand it. Yeah. It's not shade if it's tea, and I agree with it. 100%. Because tea means that it's legit. Yeah. It's not shade if it's tea. Yeah. You did it, so. Yeah. Own up to it, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. <laughs> um, I guess I kind of, that's all I have. All right. Well. We'll see you guys next week. I'm fired up for some reason. Okay, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, see you guys next week. Have an amazing week. We'll talk to you soon. See you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>